Hey everyone, welcome back to another counter side video. So today we're going to talk about Harab, her strategy, and her build guide. But before that, if you wanted updated counter side videos, please hit the subscribe button down below. Okay, guys, so as we take a look at Harab, so she is actually a counter guy. So from the call Cronenworth Puppet Troop. Okay, take note that she has three deployment cost which is actually she's actually viable as a supporter to you you know you could actually splash her in your teams um with or without um soldier uh opponents um let's take a look at her kit later so she's a supporter again she's ground type but she can do all around attack so as for her stats her strength actually in terms of stat is going to be only her hp which is going to be above average. The rest of her stats are basically her weakness. Her attack is actually low at 20, uh, 2475. Defense is 564, which is actually below average, which is 36%. Crit is 706, which is also below average. Um, hit is 508, which is below average as well. And her evasion is actually low. So at 352. So again, she is going to be pretty much a squishy character that you will be able to bring depending on the timing, depending on, for example, the, the meta for that week, you can actually bring her with you. So let's take a look at her skills okay so for her skills guys so for her basic attack so she has two valid hits whips at the front area inflicting aoe damage so basic attack it's it's a good basic attack at two valid hits so basic attack damage increases from level two to five at the uh, maximum of 20 percent her passive skill guys is sadistic creation so before we had a masochist now we have a sadist okay so it's evident by the way she has or she uses her whip so valid hits is three for her passive um increases her attack by one percent as per basic attack targets up to 99 percent which is actually good the only drawback here is her base attack is actually very low that's the problem with this passive so the only thing that you can augment here if you want to exp you know, exploit this passive is going to increase her attack stat, okay? Harab's basic attacks also damages allies at 1% of attack and increases their damage resistance by 5%. So also, aside from inflicting damage onto her own team, he, she gives them damage resistance every time up to 30% maximum, okay? But it, it's a good trade-off in a way. Levels 2, 3, and 4 is a plus in HP with a maximum of 20%, which actually increases her survivability. Level 5 is after every 4th basic attack, she delivers an enhanced damage of plus 50%. 2 damage by 33% of HP on affected summon, summon links, which, for example, um, Maria's, you know, Maria's, uh, w when she summons those tanks and those aircraft, those are your summon links, basically. And more or less, if I can see, um, this, uh, the true damage is actually going to be situational depending on if your enemies have summon links or not. But again, for her passive to be good, she has to have or her stat has to be increased in terms of her attack. Okay, next would be her special skill, which is Death Adder. So it's a 22 second uh, cooldown. Valid hits is two. Forcefully whips at the front area, inflicting AOE damage, confuses summoned units, and increases their attack by 30% for 10 seconds. In Gauntlet, this effect is also applied to cost two or below units. So unfortunately, we are going to have a lot of uh, what they call this a lot of uh, two or less cost units that aren't going to be used 
especially if your opponents have a rab so ideally when you again user you you have to make sure that the opponents cast their two you know two stat a uh, two deployment cost units first before you summon for her or you deploy her because if you do deploy her first they will not put out their units that have two or less deployment oh well, more on that later when you talk about her deployment status okay so her level two three and four damage would be 25 percent maximum at level five for her special skill cooldown is minus 0 0.5 for every basic attack okay again the faster she does a basic attack the lower this goes as well so in terms of her gears we'll talk about that later First, we'll talk about her ultimate skill, Painful Instinct. So it's a 40 second skill cooldown. Valid hits is 3. Whips and, gen and generates a strong wind, inflicting AoE damage on enemies in front. Increases damage resistance by 20%, which is very useful for 12 seconds when cast. Okay, so level 2, 3, and 4 damage will increase to 25%. And level 5 additional special skill effect on affected targets so again the special skill also inflicts when you do your ultimate skills overall <clears throat> again she is going to be situational but once the timing is right especially when she has when she is one of the ups during uh, that week she can actually certainly be used and also one soldier meta kind of ramps up like um, it's going to be if it's going to be more used often she can actually be more useful by that time okay so let's take a look all of the two or less cost units that will be affected as of now for the southeast asian server okay so i filtered already the two cost or less that we have here so if you can see here the the more or less the 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 ones that will be affected here would be for your mech sparrow and mech highly used in terms of if there are mech team not they're highly used but questionably used actually then you have your adamant sniper for soldiers you have cindy looper you have here assault uh, as a trooper iron side as well um you have here ingrid uh, you have here who else Kathy Way, Kathy Way does, does not use that much in PvP. Um, Eddie Fisher is here. Irie Alford is here. And actually, these two are going to be affected as well. Your your um, administration rifleman and shieldman. Especially for the rifleman, he is going to be... He is pretty much used in PvP. Also, your Choi Ina. Um, you also have here Kang So Young, which is frequently used. And you have Ayn Zen Zui as well for your counters so again um they are going to be you know prone to her um, um special skill so these are you know what to look out for right now in southeast asia i'm sure that um they're going to add to this uh, list in terms of um, the two and below casting then let's move guys to our gear okay guys so we are here at my harab so i equipped her actually with attack um attack gear sets um again there are, you have a few options for your harab so number one is for me this is actually my just my opinion actually if you want to maximize her in terms of damage dealing definitely go for attack because her attack is really low so um once you bump up her attack and probably have some substats of attack as well um she's going to be fine so more or less my recommendation initially is going to be attack secondary for a uh, gear set would be hp if you wanna you know you want to make her survivable but again if she's survivable but she doesn't hit her attack her attack is basically tied to her passive um this is not going to be used well and also for her passive for damage if you don't have a good enough attack so again attack for me is number one number two is hp and um earlier i just realized that if you really want to trigger some of her other skills attack speed is actually also good so again for her for her um what do you call this for her 
uh level five of her passive skill if you want to trigger this as you know as frequently as possible then you could use attack speed but again initially i would recommend you guys equipping her with attack all attack for her uh gear sets okay but for her gear stat it's going to be the ones that you can change here in the yellow portion is going to be critical so either you go with hp because you already have attack um, we also go with additional attack if you want or you'll go with hit because again her hit is not that high as well it's below average so for gear stats the yellow ones in the stat portion you can go again with um, with attack to increase further her attack you could go with hp so to increase her survivability or you could also go with hit because again hit will you know if you can't hit how can you deal damage as well so key would be attack hit and also damage okay so again um just want to say that she is going to be harder to build because of her attack stat being that low so again focus on her attack and let's go to her deployment Okay, so for her Rab's um, deployment, she is, again, I'll just repeat myself. She is going to be, she's going to be deployed right after the enemy has deployed her units. As you can see here, um, as you saw there a while ago, they are, she is going to see. She's going to use her special skill then um, and, and the summon links would be able to attack. Uh, whoever they want to attack but more or less again guys um her deployment will depend on if your enemy would summon them first because if you summon her first they are definitely not going to be you know putting out their their two cast or below so um you can actually play her mid game once the battle or once um you, the opponent actually has really put on a lot of you know a lot of units in the field and again the the what they call this the confusion is actually very very difficult to counter especially if they're good units like Ainz and Zwei um they're going to really be you know they're, they're not going to be someone that much if harab is in play so again let's take a look at her skill so again once more as she turns them and um and lets them fight for you then let's take a look at her ultimate again the design for harab is pretty much on point with her whip with with the coat and everything with the hat and everything so let's take a look at her ultimate uh nasty ultimate i would say very nasty so there you guys guy, uh, there you go guys in terms of her deployment uh, again she's going to be situational and timing of her deployment is going to be crucial as well Okay, guys, so final, my final thoughts for Harab is going to be, I would suggest that if you have her, if you got her from the counter pass, do build her now because week after week, the, the matchups are different. Um, you might never know when um, soldier comps are going to be in play. I know right now that they're not going to be in play because of uh, Auna um, dominating PvP, but again, if you have her what's going to hurt you okay so it doesn't hurt to have her on your team ready just in case you want to you know put her in your team and uh, um, try her on the opposing team so again for pvp she's going to be a 9 out of 10 currently in, in kr she's actually being banned frequently because again soldier comps are still popular in kr and more or less it will also car carry over to us <clears throat> in the coming months as we have more and more soldiers um better soldiers or good soldiers that come in to pv up to southeast asia server okay so for your pve she's going to be a three out of ten because well she's not going to be used that much um she could probably go as low as two but again, she's very pretty much situational. She there are a lot better units that you could bring in PV, PVE. 
But again, for PvP, she is going to be on your bench and just ready to be pulled off the bench anytime that Soldier Meta will be coming back in PvP rank and strategy battles. Okay, guys, so i um, like to thank you guys for staying this long on this video. Also, please consider subscribing and don't forget to click the bell icon so that you don't miss my counter side videos. Okay, guys, and also don't forget to put a like to this video. Take care. Stay safe. This is The Warden, and I'm out of here.